Today, we are reviewing a brand new product to the market. This is the Anchor Solix F3800. It is a portable power station that is actually pretty powerful, and it has some solar inputs. Now, we're gonna put it through its paces and test it and make sure that it actually works. Here we go. Hi, I'm David and welcome to my channel. Today, we're reviewing a brand new product to the market, the Anchor Solix F3800. Now this has a 3.8 kilowatt hour battery and a 6,000 watt inverter that can output both 120 and 240 volt split phase power, 60 Hertz. So this can actually plug directly into a generator input and power the house, power all of our 120 volt and 240 volt loads. Now, not at the same time, we certainly could overload it, uh, but we should be able to uh, test it out today and try and see how many things we can run. I'm excited for this model because it's finally a large scale unit. A 6,000 watt inverter built into it, that's pretty big for a portable power station. So instead of needing to bring out a gas generator and plug into that generator port, uh, we're, we'll just plug this in and we'll see how many things we can power up in our house as well as the solar input and a bunch of other features that we're going to be testing today. In the description below, I will leave some chapter breaks if you'd like to see any specific testing, but we'll just plug it in and see if we can do it. With the state of charge being 21% inside the Anchor Solex, I think we should give it a charge before we begin our testing. It comes with this power cable and let's just plug it in and see if it automatically turns on. I hear some relays clicking. Well, that is charging up pretty quick. We'll come back in 2.3 hours and hopefully it will be fully charged. With the battery fully charged, let's go outside and run our capacity test. The power station is on and we are reading 100% state of charge. Now press this power button over here. This will turn on these outlets. You can hear the fan kick on and I heard a relay. And we have 121.6 volts and 60 Hertz. Now we'll just plug in the space heater. We have almost 1600 watts. As you can see right here, we have our kilowatt hours and the time since we started. We'll just let this run. It says that we have 2.1 hours remaining. Oh, and it died with 1% at 3.31 kilowatt hours. So over here on the screen, it is flashing 1%. And I was watching this screen as well. As soon as it went from two to 1%, it turned off the output. And now this went blank. It has no more output on it. So time to charge it up. So this can actually plug directly into a generator input and power the house, power all of our 120 volt and 240 volt loads. So let's run over to this generator input into the house and then switch the house over to off-grid mode. On the side, we have a lot of outlets. We have a large 50 amp outlet, a 30 amp twist lock, and we have two sets of 120 volt outlets. The left is leg one, the right is leg two. This is my generator cord. This is a 50 amp generator cord and we'll plug it in right here. <laughs> now we'll go plug in the other side. All right. Here's the generator input into the house. There we are. Before we go inside the house, one other thing to do on this unit is to turn on this power panel. We'll hear that relay click internally, and I just heard the fans kick on. So now this is powered up. So let's go inside the house and throw the manual transfer switch. This is the interlock switch on the main house panel. We'll turn off the grid and then turn on the generator input and it's powered up. We saw the lights kick back on. That means the anchor Solix is working. 
The house is currently drawing just under 300 watts, and that's to power up our normal uh, internet and baseline loads like uh, laptops that are plugged in. Let's see if the stovetop works. This is the biggest heating element we have. Let's kick it on. And it's working. That's great. So it is working with the Anchor Solix. I think that is a 3000 watt heating element. Let's go outside and take a look. We're currently up at 3800 watts. With this burner on, let's see if we can kick on the microwave as well. This will be a hard one. And it's working. I'm actually impressed. So it shut off. Having the stovetop element with the microwave along with lights and computers and all that was just too much for it and it shut off. But I was impressed that we got some of those items going. Uh, knowing that in an emergency, in a power outage, uh, you can run a lot of things in your house like your refrigerators, your freezers, uh, keep the lights on, uh, that's good. But you might want to go around and turn off some of those 240 volt loads so it doesn't trip it out. But it turned right back on again, so we know we didn't damage it. So let's keep testing and see what else we can run. For the next test, let's see if this power station can charge up an electric car, an EV. Now I don't own one, so I'm over here at my dad's place. And uh, dad, what kind of a uh, car is this? It's a Volkswagen ID4. Yep, just a small SUV. All right. Uh, what's the battery pack on this thing? Uh, it's like 85. Kilo 80, 85 <laughs> kilowatt hours. And we know that we have 3.8 kilowatt hours in this thing. <laughs> so quite a big difference, but hopefully we'll get a few miles uh, into this car and we'll, we'll find out. We'll try it. <laughs> Let's check this vehicle's dash, find out the range that is remaining. And then we'll do the same after the charge and find out how many miles we add to it. All right, what are we looking at? 44% charge, and based on the past driving and climate conditions, it's estimating the remaining battery will give me 123 miles. Okay. So 123 mile range remaining. That's correct. And from your experience, how <clears throat> accurate is that thing? It's pretty good. Um, if all of a sudden I go from just not having the heater on to all of a sudden it's cold outside and turn the heater on, it'll adjust. Um, and I, I rely upon it, it's, it's pretty accurate. Cool. This is a brand new level two charger that I just purchased. I purchased this particular charger because it can be adjusted. We'll have to adjust down the amperage uh, so that we meet the uh, maximum of 6,000 watts for the Anchor Solex. So this is a 50 amp plug, which matches what we have here on the side. Now over here, you can see we're at 100% state of charge and we'll turn on the, we'll turn on this panel All right. So currently this is set to 40 amps. So let's adjust that down to 24 amps. I think 24 amps on this will be the maximum that we'll be able to pull from the Anchor Solix. All right, what's that light indicate? Uh, it turns green when it's charging. And now we've bumped it up to the full 24 amps, which is 5.7 kilowatts. And over here on the display, 5.7 kilowatts. So we are finally up to the full speed that we'll be able to get out of the Anchor Solix. So this says that we're adding 22 miles per hour we're not going to be able to charge for a full hour, but that is pretty cool. We just heard this stop charging and it looks like we have a red light over here. And let's see what we did. 
Well, this is showing just 1% remaining. Anything on this screen? No, that screen's blank. So I guess we have depleted the battery. Well, let's go check how many miles we added. How did we do? Well, it's at 135. We had 123 before, so we've got 12 miles added. And it's at 47%, I believe it was 44 before, so. 12 miles. Yeah, 12 miles. All right. Enough to get me out of a bind. On the side of the unit are two solar inputs. Now these go up to 60 volts. Now I think that's a little bit low. It means that I'm going to have to parallel my panels. I won't be able to series connect them. And that's why they gave you uh, two MC4 uh, splitters here. These are for paralleling panels. Uh, but this is good for just one set. But because there's two MPPT inputs, we could actually parallel more panels and run them into the second input. The solar input is XT60 connectors, and these are MC4. They did not send me any adapter cable to go here. So I bought a lot of accessory cables. Now this accessory cable will go from MC4 to XT60, and I bought a long enough length of it in 10 gauge wire so that we can run from the panels to this unit. You're also gonna need a few shorter lengths of MC4 cables for running from the farthest away solar panel to the splitter. And finally, because I'll be testing both solar inputs at the same time, I bought some additional splitters. So all these accessories that I purchased separately were about $180, and that will allow me to fully test the solar input. So let's go to the solar panels behind me and test this and see if it'll charge. Right now, the unit is at 70% state of charge. It's sunny outside, yeah, maybe a little hazy, but let's give it a shot and see if we can charge this unit off the solar panels. On the back side of the solar panels, we have our MC4 cables. We're gonna have to take those apart and run them to the splitters. Now that I have these three solar panels parallel together using the splitters, I'm going to take this adapter cable from the MC4 and I'll be able to run it all the way down to the unit to the XT60 connector. We have now wired up all six panels and they are coming out on these red and black wires to XT60 connectors. Before we go and plug this into the portable power station, let's make sure that our voltage is still correct. And we've got 40, 44 volts. And on the other one, 44 volts. So always a good thing to make sure that your polarity is correct and your voltage is correct. We have 70%. Now as we plug these in, let's see if it charges. And you can see right there, it is boosting up the input. And over on this side, it says that it will take just under an hour at this rate to recharge. So it is working, all six panels are in. Now if I remove one of the plugs, let's watch what happens. And you can see we're down to half the input. And go back to plugging it in. And now it's increasing that. There we go. Nice, almost 1300 watts. My kids recently got this cute little playhouse behind me, but instead of leaving it in the dirt, I thought I'd lift it up on a little wooden platform so that it won't rot out as quickly. So I have a few tools. These are all 120 volt tools. We have a 15 amp sliding compound miter saw, an 11 amp shop vac, and over here, a 13 amp air compressor for firing the nails. So hopefully the Anchor Solix can power all of these. Now when two are on at the same time, like the shop vac and the miter saw, I have them plugged into two different phases on the Anchor Solix. Uh, but otherwise, let's go and just see if it works. <laughs>
We used 8% to make a few cuts. All right, now let's turn on the air compressor. All right, it looks like it's working. <laughs> this anchor power station is checking off a lot of boxes. We can charge from the solar array behind me. We can run power tools. We can run 240 volt loads to include charging an electric vehicle. So I'm pretty impressed with it. Now in the future, anchor should be coming out with a sub panel that will allow this unit to uh, interface with AC coupling and paralleling two of these units together if you wanted up to 12,000 watts of uh, output. Now that's great, but under no means should you ever purchase something based on what will be coming in the future. Uh, make sure that this unit can meet your needs now if it's something that you wanna put your money towards. But it passed these tests and I'm impressed with it. Anchor says this is the most accessible home power system. Now of these portable power stations, this is definitely the most powerful one I've ever tested. And I was really happy to see that it could do all of these different things that we put it through. So thanks Anchor for sending it out and letting me test it. And thank you everybody for watching. If you enjoy these videos, please like, subscribe, comment, and share.